This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. This lecture is on Chapter 25 of the uh, free lecture notes, which, um, assuming you've printed it out, then as you can see, it's um, it says group accounts further points. So it's the um, the last chapter on um, group accounts or consolidations. Uh, and there's no more numbers to learn in this chapter. We've dealt with all the numbers, producing the statement of uh, financial position and the statement of profit or loss. However, you can, and you probably will, be tested on the two points that are in uh, this chapter. And so, um, well, I don't really want to read it all to you, but I need to stress a few things. The first is the definition of a subsidiary. Now, I did say, uh, well, I've said right the way through the lectures that uh, a subsidiary, we've got a group where the parent company, where one company controls another company. And the most obvious um, sign of control is where the parent owns more than 50% of the voting shares of the ordinary shares of the subsidiary. Uh, and in fact, in the exam, as far as numbers questions are concerned, that will be the case. I mean, in every example, uh, we had P owning 100%, 80%, 55%, uh, and so on. Uh, and so in every case, they held more than 50% of the shares. Therefore, we've got a parent and a subsidiary. And therefore, we must produce consolidated statements. However, it is possible uh, for, the, uh, for one company to control another, even if they don't own 50% of the shares. So with 50% of the shares, they certainly control because they win any vote. But even if it's less than 50% of the shares, you'll see the four bullet points there, um, situations where they still, we would say, had control and therefore we would need to consolidate. Now the first one is when they've got power over more than half the voting rights by virtue of an agreement with other investors. So you see, you could have one company owning 40% of the shares. That on its own wouldn't give control. We wouldn't consolidate. But if somebody else owned 20% of the shares and we agreed with them, we own 40%, they own 20%, but we agreed that we'd always vote together, then of course that would give us control. Now the second one, power to govern the financial and operating policies of the entity under statute, law or agreement. If for some reason, whatever the reason, um, P has the power to dictate what the company did, even though they don't own um, more than half the shares, then again, P would have control, we'd have to prepare consolidated accounts. Uh, the third one, power to appoint or remove the majority of the directors, or whoever else is controlling the company. Well, again, however that arose, if we can appoint the directors, we can dictate what the, what the other company does. And therefore, whatever our shareholdings uh, is, would be irrelevant, we control, we would have to produce consolidated accounts. Uh, and finally, which is actually, the end result's the same, power to cast the majority of votes at meetings of the directors. So whenever the directors have a meeting, if we can control the vote, we effectively can control how the companies run. Again, we'd consolidate. Uh, now, again, that's not your problem for numbers. For numbers questions, uh, it'll always be in exams, in paper F3, it will always be more than 50% of the shares. But I think you know what I mean by 
written questions, you know, these questions where which of the following statements are true, that sort of thing. Uh, that's when these other four situations that give control, that's when they could be relevant. <coughs> uh, the second point relates to what we call an associated company. Um, and as you can see, I mean, as I say, I'm not going to read the whole thing, but an associate is an entity in which the investor has significant influence, but where it's not a subsidiary. Uh, and as far as the exam is concerned, a significant interest is if um, one company owns more than 20% of the other company. Uh, obviously not more than 50%. If it was more than 50%, it's a subsidiary. But if it's between 20 and... If one company holds between 20 and 50%, we call it an associate. Now, if we have an associate, we use what we call equity accounting, the bid in bold. And that word could be relevant in the exam. The equity method, which I'm about to explain, relates to associates. And the point is this, although you won't get numbers, let me just make up a few. Um, suppose you had a company, P, and on its own statement of financial position, maybe it's got non-current assets. This is its own statement of financial position. Uh, of 100,000. Maybe they've got an investment in S, who they own 80%, which uh, cost 50,000. And maybe they've got an investment in A, which we own 30%. That cost 10,000. Now, as far as the investment in S is concerned, because we own 80%, it's a subsidiary. And so when we come to consolidate, we don't show that 50,000. Instead, we've got goodwill, we've got non-controlling interest and so on. As far as the investment in A is concerned, it's not a subsidiary. So we don't go through all that business. However, because it's an associate, we owe more than 30%. We leave the investment on the consolidated statement. The consolidated statement will have total non-current assets. It'll have goodwill because of the subsidiary. But investment in A will sit there as a little asset on its own. But Instead of just showing the cost of 10,000, we add our share, P's share, of post-acquisition profits. Of A. So we don't consolidate it calculating goodwill and everything else. That investment appears on the consolidated statement of financial position just as non-current assets appear. But, as I've said, the amount we show is the cost, which was on P's uh, uh, own statement, plus their share, 30% in this case, of A's profits since acquisition. At the same time, when we're calculating the um, retained earnings, the group's retained earnings, remember, are uh, all of P's plus the share of uh, the subsidiaries, post-acquisition profits. Well, we also add in P's share of the associates' post-acquisition profits. 
So that's the way we deal with it. And I say I'm not going to go through an example because you won't be asked numbers, but that's what the equity method is. However, one thing I must stress and do be clear about is we only do this equity business if we're consolidating. We only consolidate if we have a subsidiary. So my tiny example there, because we have a subsidiary, we must prepare consolidated accounts. And because we're doing consolidated accounts, the investment in the subsidiary, in the associate rather, we do what I've just said. However, if that didn't exist, if there was no subsidiary, then we wouldn't even prepare consolidated accounts. The fact that there's an associate would be completely irrelevant. So do remember that. They could play a little trick on you. Uh, we only consolidated a, a subsidiary. If we haven't got a subsidiary, then everything I've said about the associate is irrelevant because there's no consolidation. All right, I hope that makes sense. Uh, I mean, read the um, two pages yourself but uh, I've stressed what the important bit is.